This is Fantasy General 2. It is a turn-based strategy game where you play as a barbarian clan, at least in the campaign mode, and you are tasked with going through a wide variety of different scenarios and attempting to survive. This video is kindly sponsored by Slytherin, and we are going to be playing today in the first initial stages of the campaign, and then in uh, maybe a future video, we're going to take a look at the later game with all these amazing advanced units, and we're going to see what's going on. So if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. I'd highly recommend checking it out. It is actually really intriguing, very involving, and you can see here we have a, uh, a small little prologue right here. 300 years have passed since the Shadow Wars have ravaged Keldonia and the world of Aea, and the struggles of the past have long since faded into legends. In the highlands of Farish, clans of barbarian warriors have eked out a living in the harsh northern climate, constantly feuding with each other and raiding the wealthier borderland towns. Fed up with these raids, the borderland clans called on the Empire, a powerful realm controlling much of Keldonia. The Western Imperial Region was dispatched to see off the Highland Raiders, and with the help of Borderland clans Iseel and Machnar, destroyed High King Brendan's army in the Battle of Worms Pass. A treaty was signed that forbade any clan from crossing into the Borderlands in return for peace. Since then, there has been no High King to unite the clans, and they fell into quarreling and raiding amongst themselves. In these dark times, your clan has been led by Falir One-Eye, a warrior of great renown, you are his son and designated heir, and you are eager to prove your mettle to your father. All right, so there are multiple difficulties, a lot of different difficulties, actually. Warrior, hero, general, and legend. If you are an extremely amazing strategist, then legend is definitely for you, but I am not. So we're going to be playing on hero, which is normal difficulty. Oh, yeah. By the way, this is probably one of the most unique turn-based strategies I've played recently. So let's start start the campaign and uh, see exactly what's going on with it. So when you first load in, you're given a tribe and a certain amount of units, and you're given uh, some objectives that you need to do. And there are certain time limits. It's not really a time limit as such, but it's more a case of you have to make the most of your actions in the game. You'll see exactly what I mean as we go forward. The winter is near, son, and the harvest was poor this year. We need to get food for the clan to survive. Clan Donna has done enough wealth, has more than enough wealth, shall I say? Oh, I, it must be my one eye, I can't read properly, apparently. Anyway, has more than enough wealth to spare? This is a chance to prove your mettle. Raid their steads and bring back home some good loot. Thank you for trusting me with this, father. And now we can, uh, yeah, here's the other cool thing about the game, which I did not mention just yet. There are many different decisions that you can make throughout these various scenarios, and they are going to make a big difference on gameplay. And hopefully in this video, you will be able to see probably my favorite choice so far, and uh, we'll, we'll see it hopefully in, in maybe 10 minutes or so, if I am good enough to get there. All right, so uh, Clan Donna won't even see me coming. I will raid them and return laughing at them, scratching their heads, or I will do my best for my for our clan and make you proud, I promise. We'll, we'll go for number one. I know, son. This is why I trust you with this task. Take some of our younglings with you. They seem as eager to prove themselves as you. Be quick, son. This is a raid, not a war party. And watch out for dire wolves. They are roaming the highlands again, all hunger and teeth. May our ancestors watch over you. All right, so yeah, exactly what he said. You gotta be careful about direwolves. The direwolves do not pose that much of a threat, but they are going to be a bit dangerous if you allow your units to get to a little bit of a lower HP level. Now, there are a wide variety of different environmental effects. There are items that you can equip. There are skill trees that you can spec into and unit upgrade trees as well. So uh, let's just touch upon the first few things that I mentioned in that long list of features here. So forests. Generally forests are very, very good for units that want to be sneaky, maybe some ranged units. You can also go into forests if you want to have a little bit less damage, well, a little bit less damage taken from missiles. So in other words, arrows, projectiles, and so forth. 
Otherwise, you can hide in the forest to potentially get some kind of ambush going, which I think is really cool. So for example, you can see here that this blue eye right next to Ferliason's little icon here, that indicates that he is hidden. If that eye was red, then he would be seen by the enemy and you know they would know exactly where we are. So let's move along the forest line here, see maybe whether we can get a little bit of an ambush going on the Clan Dunner's uh, first couple of units there. And we're going to move these Brotherhood of Ravens over here as well. It's, it's just really, really cool to see the varieties of units as well. So we currently have Light Spear Infantry and Light Shock Infantry. And they all have different names as well. So that obviously does add to the immersion. It adds to the uniqueness of each particular squad. So you know exactly where which squad actually is. In other words, you're never going to lose them, which I think is pretty cool. Otherwise, let's just take a quick look at the unit upgrade trees. So you can see here, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's just crazy how much variety you are going to end up having as you progress through the campaign. So for example, you've got a wide variety of different abilities. They have the charge attack here, which deals 100% melee damage as charge damage, which is kind of amazing. And I, I like that in general. But otherwise, what can you level these guys up into? You need to have the gold and you need to have the suitable armor or resource to be able to do it. So for example, if I had 46 gold, which I of course do not at the moment, but if I had 46 gold and I had one armor piece or a little bit of iron to make armor or whatever it may be, then I could level these guys up into Axemen. And as you can see, these Axemen have significant upgrades. They have shields, whereas these guys don't. They just come with regular swords. So they have shields, which gives them a plus 50% missile damage reduction, which is just insane. Can you imagine these guys against some enemy archers? They're just going to take no damage whatsoever. It's going to be really good. Of course, there is a little bit of a difference between these guys. These guys do tend to have well, should we say the, the initial units do tend to have higher HP, but that is just because of the offset between the shield and not having a shield, because not having a shield is, well, it's going to be very damaging indeed from missile units. Otherwise, you can level them up again. You can level the Axemen up again into a Thane, for example, which is an infantry leader. Now, this guy has the harasser trait, which basically makes it so that they suffer, so that the enemy suffers penalties, so armor modifiers and damage and, and all that stuff. And then they also provide an aura, which gives plus one morale as well as plus 10% damage. And you can see there, hero, plus 50% invulnerable damage reduction. So all of that on top of it is just, that's kind of insane. They also have a huge amount of morale as well. And morale is a big thing in this game as well. So the more that you can decrease the enemy's morale, the better chances you're going to have of not losing any units. This guy has really good armor as well. You can see that he's got four armor instead of the Axemen having three. And these guys have zero armor, so they're going to take a lot of damage. Otherwise, what you could do is you could level up your Axemen into heavy Axemen. And then these guys are just amazing. I mean, they've got 11 armor rating, which is a 79% physical damage reduction. What a crazy amount of damage reduction there. And then if you if you get, you know, if you get to the very high, high tier units, you can actually get wear bears, which use metal claws. And they have a wide variety of different abilities here. They have fearless. This unit cannot be broken or routed by morale and is immune to fear. And it also causes fear as well. And causing fear reduces the enemy's morale by one and also reduces their damage. Now, of course, these guys are going to have much lower HP, but they are shock infantry. These guys are like, oh, they're absolute beasts. But this is the thing. These Axemen, these heavy Axemen, they don't level up into the Werebears. It's the Berserkers that go up into the Werebears. So you can see the, the upgrade line there. Uh, goes off to the left. And then you have Cleavers here. These are magic shock infantry. So they use magic Cleavers and they have a, well, you can see for yourself. They just have so much stuff and you can easily take a look and see exactly what you want to do. Otherwise, the easy, easy upgrade path, or at least the easy one for me, dependent on what you find, of course, on in the, in the, uh, in the game world, are these missile infantry. Personally, I feel like the missile infantry is really powerful. 
and we're going to see how good they turn out to be. But they level up into wolf killers, which give them slightly more slightly more damage and uh, slightly more armor and so on and so forth. And then the armored slingers will, will have much more armor. But if you want to be a little bit less, you know, a little bit less straightforward, then you can go for some recon infantry, which do tend to have this melee weapon, which has an ambush bonus, which deals 200% additional damage when ambushing which is just insane in itself and then you could also also get um well from the from the uh wolf killers you could level these guys up into thunderers which then have magic slings so there's also that and every single unit has an, a different upgrade tree so for example these these spear infantry they, they go into completely different things so there are there's so much depth here there's just so much depth otherwise then you have your hero units there are many, many hero units that you can unlock. And these guys have skill trees. So you can see here, there's a wide variety of different things here too. So it is amazing. Anyway, we are just going to continue onward now. And I think I have used all of my... Yep, I have used all my movement. So we're just going to be moving over here. And we're going to try and kill these guys as soon as possible. So technically what I could do right now is... Yeah, we could attack with this, and that's a decisive attack. I think we're going to do that. Our hero unit is probably not going to take that much damage, which is really good. And we're going to just go and skip all units once again, and then we're going to attack in the next turn. Hopefully, I'm not going to take too long to do it, because taking, taking long is kind of bad. So let's see if we can do this. Yes, there we go. We did some good damage. Okay, so also what I should mention is that this these uh, this health bar right here, these pips are indicating the health of each individual unit in your squad. And if there isn't a pip there, that means that unit has died. And as a result, you're going to be losing experience once you complete the scenario. And it's going to, it's going to kind of just take some experience from your combat and then recruit more units for you so there are those kinds of things going on there too otherwise we're just going to uh, yeah i could i could move this guy back or we could just attack we could go from i guess we'll move over here and we'll just stay in the forest and i guess this guy will just continue attacking because what we've got to do is we're to raid the southern stead the western stead and the northern stead and hopefully i will be able to get there so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run over here, and we are already seen, so that doesn't really make so much sense, but I guess it's okay. Oh, nice ambush! Yes! We got a wonderful ambush against those wolves, and I was not able to pull off an ambush in the previous time that I played this level, so this is really cool. And it says here, for an ambush to succeed, a unit has to have the ambush promotion and must be hidden. When an enemy moves into their zone of control, which is the six hexes surrounding them, the enemy is stopped and an ambush happens. Ambushes are free attacks that deprive the target of a counterattack. A unit is, that has been spotted by the enemy cannot ambush, so you better avoid forests or deploy your scouts to detect this hidden danger. Because there are scouts that can see through forests and things like that. There's also magic items that will also do something similar. So there's a wide variety of different ways that you can counter enemies and their ambush attempts and that is another wonderful thing about this game there's just so many different ways that you can counter the enemy and well they can of course counter you too so that's a little bit of a worry but yeah anyway now we can raid this we're going to do exactly that we're going to raid it and as a result we're going to be gaining some cash hopefully i'll be able to do a decent amount and there we go. All right, so the AI will start doing it. There we go. We got 25 gold, and we also didn't... Well, we didn't get anything else, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to rest here. I'm going to make my hero unit rest for the moment, and we are going to go up here, because this is a mountain, so it kind of gives you a little bit of damage reduction. And we're going to move these guys ahead somewhat. And uh, I think we're I think we're pretty good to continue onward. Yes, I think we are. And so we have raided the southern stead now. So now we need to raid the western one, which is just here. But I've got I, I would assume that we're probably going to have some enemies. Oh no, there aren't any enemies. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna get onto that. Ah, here we go. Yeah, 
there is a settlement right there, as well as enemies. So we're going to have to do some damage to them. Thankfully, my hero unit has now rested and he is full HP. Resting takes one turn and it usually will heal your units for full HP, unless there's some kind of status effect that I'm not aware of in the future. But in my opinion, that's really cool. Okay, so technically what I can do here is we can restore the squad. It will cost me nine gold and this will refill the unit's ranks and keep its current XP level. So if I wanted to, I could do that or I could start a raid. And I'm hopeful that I will be able to raid without getting interrupted by the enemy. Not entirely sure whether that does interrupt. I don't think it does. No, it didn't. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. I did not realize that it would not interrupt it. That's, that's kind of amazing. Okay, so we're just going to move on here. We're going to attack them. And we, we do so much damage with charge. These shock infantry are so fun to play with because the charge damage that they have, it's basically like a double attack because their initial charge does the same damage as their weapons. And then the follow-up attack from their actual weapons then does additional damage. So it's kind of crazy. All right, so we're just going to stick around uh, going along the road here because going along the road does end up giving you slightly longer travel distance which is really pretty cool so yeah otherwise we're gonna continue on with oh hello there it seems like we have two two squads that can be upgraded into something so technically what we can do is we can spend this 25 gold and i can upgrade one of these shock infantry into slingers and i think that this is a pretty co a pretty cool idea so i'm gonna do that just so that you can see what actually happens and we're going to tell these guys to rest. Tell these guys to rest as well. Because there's going to be a pretty big fight coming up. And I'd like them to be kind of ready for any eventuality. And there are six turns remaining. By the way, this is exactly what I mean when I'm talking about like like a... It's kind of like a turn limit or a turn timer or something like that. You need to be quick when it comes to this particular scenario. This is not going to be every single scenario, of course. So it says here, determines how much value can be received from income, raiding, and exploring locations. Winning a scenario will reward you with treasure equal to the remaining wealth. In other words, the quicker that you can complete a scenario, especially in this kind of objective, the better. And if I were able to complete it right now, I would gain six batches of wealth. But of course, I am not going to be able to do that just yet. And we're going to get some attacking guys coming in here. I'm not a big fan of that. Thank you very much. Thankfully, my spearmen were able to break their charge, which is pretty awesome. And we are now ready to fight. So let's see what we can do here. We're going to put our ranged units behind our melee. And we're just going to move on and be very close to them. Just, just you know, just close enough to them to do some good damage. And I'm going to I'm gonna just throw it. Yeah, there we go. Take that. Who knew slingers could be so effective? There we go, good damage, and then our hero unit can finish them off. Now, the reason why I left the hero unit for last, even though they're able to do a lot of damage, is because now the unit who, who, who deals the killing blow moves on to the hex where the enemy unit once was. In other words, now our hero unit is right on the doorstep of the enemy settlement, and that's exactly what we want, because we really do not want one of our other squads to be right there because they can potentially lose units from their squad and being able to sustain the amount of units you have in each squad helps their experience gain to stay at the same level hopefully that uh, hopefully i explained that correctly <laughs> anyway hopefully we'll be able to deal with these dire wolves relatively easily as well they seem to not really know what's going on right now so we'll just deal with them easily enough and we will start attacking here. Now, unfortunately, these guys are in a fortification at the moment. And it is making it rather difficult for us to even get close to them. Uh, well, not close to them, but you know what I mean. To be actually be able to do full damage. Because at the moment, they are taking 33% less damage thanks to the fortification. And what I would like to do is move around here. Oh, yeah, it's because I had to go over the river. That's pretty bad. Well, maybe maybe we can do something here. I mean, there's only three turns remaining. We might be able to... Ooh, they're disordered now. Fantastic. That's really good. Okay, we did some more damage. Do you think I can... Oh, yes, I, I can kill these guys. Nice. There we go. And now we can start the raid almost immediately. And I think we'll be good. 
We have raided enough to last us the winter. Let's get home before the Donna warriors catch up with us. We have won this mission. Oh yes. Okay, so as you can see right here, because of the various units that we ended up losing to the Grim Reaper, I have had to spend some gold. Well, I could spend gold and I then don't have to lose experience. Should I do that? It's only 20 gold and we have 50 at the moment. So technically what I could do is I could do that. Let's do it. Why not? Then they're not going to lose any experience and they will be much more, you know, shall we say, much more proficient, hopefully, towards the uh, the next level and uh, maybe a little bit better as we go forward. All right. You have done me proud, son. This will feed our clan for the long nights ahead. Your winter supply is secured. You return to the quiet life in your father's halls. A few weeks later, your father calls you to his side. We have a visitor tonight, son. Dougal Ravencloak is coming here. I don't know what he wants, but many say where the Black Bard goes, trouble follows. So we best not anger him. Treat him with respect, but keep your wits about you. A man dressed in a wide, black cloak made of black feathers enters the hall, carrying a long trumpet, crowned with a boar's head. His face is hidden by his hood, and his boots are frayed and muddy. Thank you for welcoming me to your stead. I won't trouble you for too long. I just want to rest my weary bones by the fire for a night. You are welcome to my house and hearth. Sit and eat with us. We don't have much, but what we have we gladly share. This is very kind of you, Chieftain. I thank you for your offer. Oh, is that your son? It's been a decade since I last saw him. He looks like a fine warrior. The bard's dark eyes seem to peer directly into your soul. Tell me, son of Felia, what do you seek in life? All right, so now this is another choice that we get to make. Glory in battle, I want to lead our clan to many victories, inspiring our warriors. Or blood and rage, I want to rally a horde of berserkers around me and overrun my enemies. Or might in combat, I want to be the strongest warrior Keldonia has seen. I don't know whether this makes any difference to the course of things going forward. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to go from, uh, shall, we, shall we aim high? Or shall we just go for Berserkers? Because I love Berserkers. Let's go for Berserkers for fun. Is that so? Then let us all ask the ancestors to make you fleet-footed and lead you to your destiny. Now forgive me. I am weary after a long day's walk and must rest. What? What have you done? I felt a touch of cold freezing me to my bones. Did you indeed? Must have been a draught of night air from the outside. I will see you in the morning, Felison. Sleep well. All right, so there you go. Now this is the world map. This is the world map right here. It is massive. <laughs> As you can see, the empire has a rather large stake on, on everything over there. And there are a wide variety of different little areas here too. So the first scenario that we can go with is a dark visitor. The North Road is plagued by bandits, wild animals, and trolls so let's do it oh yeah by the way we should probably do something first we should probably recruit some additional units so i'm going to recruit some more shock infantry because i personally feel like they are going to be the most useful for us and we do have a supply limit as well so you will not be able to recruit unlimited amounts of units if you have a massive amount of gold of course because you have a supply of nine and we have five at the moment so we're just going to hire uh, can I hire these guys? Yeah, there we go. All right, so we hired those guys. Now we have some more shock infantry. I personally feel like the shock infantry is a little more my style because they can level up into berserkers and I find them quite fun. So otherwise, let's go. Escort Dougal Ravencloak on the road north. The area is home to wild animals and trolls, so be careful of ambushes. Let us start the scenario. This night you sleep fitfully, your dreams filled with mighty cities made of white stone domes glinting golden in the sun, and you at the head of a large army astride a noble beast. Waking up, you chide yourself for such childish fantasies as you step into your father's smoke-filled hall. There you are, son. We're just about to bid farewell to Master Dougal here. Be careful, Master Dougal. The road north is dangerous. 
Dire wolves roam the woods, and I have heard word of trolls in the hills. Pick some of my warriors as an escort to ensure safe passage through our lands. Thank you for your generosity, Felia. I will take your son and his band with me then. He will make great company on the road. My, my son? I, you, oh, very well. You know our laws of hospitality mean I can't refuse your request, Ravencloak, since I have offered you the choice of our warriors. I spoke in haste and you have used my words against me, but I warn you, my son must not come to harm. Worry not, Felia. I am sure your son will be fine. After all, we all prayed to the ancestors for his destiny to fulfill itself, didn't we? All right, a dark visitor. Let's do it. All right, so this scenario is much different from the previous one. You have been walking in silence for a while, for listen. What is on your mind? Why me, Master Dougal? What do you want? And what did you do to me last night? I merely helped you find your destiny, and I am interested in how it plays out. Why so suspicious, son? Did your father tell you that I eat the souls of dead warriors, or what other rumors did you hear? He just told me that you go... He just told me that where you go, trouble follows. Is it true? Do you eat the souls of dead warriors? Yes and no. I can use the power of departing spirits and weave it into magic. Thus the dead do lend me a bit of their strength, but their souls remain theirs, I can assure you. No need to be afraid. Maybe I will show you today. But for now, let's march. I am sure we will have more time to talk on the road. All right, so Dougal is a temporary unit that is not going to be staying with us past this particular scenario, or maybe maybe it will be the case, but he is not technically part of our army at the moment. I mean, he is in this scenario, but he will not be coming with us past it, unless the story demands it, of course. So what we're going to do is we're just going to spawn every single person that I have out here, and we're going to be ending our deployment and then moving on. And I, for some reason, I don't know why these guys don't have a name. Ah, unit has to be level 3 or higher to rename them. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know at least. Okay. So you can see here that all of our units are gaining experience. They're about halfway to the next level. And each level increases the unit's health by 10% and its damage by 5%. So that's actually really cool. All right. So Dougal himself has this thing called an astral band. And this grants him the ability spirit vision which basically lifts the fog of war over an area anywhere on the map for a short time, which is kind of amazing. So what we can do is we can left-click to unequip it. Well, I don't, I don't want to unequip it. I'd like to cast the ability. Not entirely sure if I, if I know how to do that at the moment, but um, do I even need it though? That's the thing. Maybe I, maybe I won't even need it because look, there's spirit vision. So maybe I need to move a little bit first. And Dougal, by the, by the way, is himself actually pretty proficient at, at what he does. So it's maybe not even necessary. Oh, are we being attacked? Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Be careful for listen. The fog is dense in this part of the highlands. It may hide you as well as your enemy. Watch your steps, warriors, and keep your eyes sharp. There are wild beasts hiding in the woods. We can use this artifact I collected during my travels. It grants us a vision of distant things and reveals hidden creatures. Why not look ahead into these woods and see what they are hiding? All right, so now we can now we can use the uh, the spirit vision because we've been granted one mana by him, and uh, mana is definitely something that you want to use as soon as possible on powerful spells because it does not carry over into the next region. So pretty important to do that if you uh, if you have some spells at your disposal you probably want to use it relatively quickly so let's move on there we go I'm making sure that my hero unit is at the very beginning because I would like the hero unit to be attacked first if at all possible all right so here you go we can now use spirit vision so I can use it anywhere on the map so if I wanted to I could basically use it round about here I think would be pretty good do I need to right click to do that? I think I need to right click. There we go. All right, so we used it, Spirit Vision. So as you can see, there are a band of dire wolves in that area, and I think it lasts for, how long does it last? 
I'm not entirely sure. Maybe a couple of turns, maybe one turn. I don't know whether it really matters. Ooh, and there's also a cave here. This cave is going to be pretty important, so I'm going to try and get over there as soon as I can. Maybe we'll be able to acquire some rather nice loot from it. Okay, so Dougal has already done his action for this turn, so I won't be able to move him ahead here, but that's okay. I personally don't really mind. Alright, so technically what I could do now is I could go right up on these guys and I could attack them straight up. But do I want to do that? Uh, I kind of want to explore the cave as soon as possible. The large cave seems to have been ransacked and burned recently, and several sheep lie slaughtered on the ground. You find some weapons you can salvage, but nothing else of use. Alright, so look at that. We gained another weapon. And that is actually really quite nice, because what I can do with that is I can create another skirmisher band if I so desire. So technically I can get some more missile infantry, which might very well be something that I want to do. But I don't know whether I should do that right now. And uh, these guys can't even see my, my, my person by the looks of things. So, oh, now they can see that guy. Okay, well, uh, uh, I guess we'll just move move over here. And we'll, we'll take our spearmen over here, because if they get attacked, then they can just automatically kind of defend against the enemy because of the the spear. <laughs> the spears are doing pretty nicely on that. Uh, and the wolves appear to want to attack my hero unit, which is really nice. Now, here's the cool thing about missile units. They have this ability called defensive fire. Let me see if I can actually read it for you. Ah, yeah, yes, there it is. The unit can support adjacent allies in battle by firing a volley into any attacker prior to combat. This also happens if an enemy unit decides to walk into a hex that's close to the slingers themselves. So there's a good amount of counterplay here. So if the enemy does decide to be a bit annoying, then you can make them pay for it quite dearly, which is pretty cool in my opinion. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the sling... Weaken these guys up a little bit, and then we're just going to finish them off with our hero. That's good for me. There we go. And we'll move some of these spearmen ahead. Oh, ho! Oh, now what do we have here? You spot a band of warriors fighting a group of angry trolls. Some men already lie on the ground, crushed by the large trolls' powerful blows. As they see you approach, they call out. Help us take down those damned greyskins, clan brother! More humans come in and rob us. No matter, you will all pay. Pick a side in this battle, Phyllis, and, and choose carefully. All right, so this is where we get my favorite choice. This is, the, this is the choice I was talking about previously in the video, and I think that this is a really cool one. I really like this, because you can either decide to help the humans, you can decide that you want to help the trolls, or you can just kill them all. <laughs> uh... I think I'm going to help the trolls, actually. I think the trolls would be a powerful ally, so we're going to go and help the trolls. You are a remarkable man, Phyllis, and not many would have picked the Greyskin side. Let's hope you made the right choice. Alright, so now what we have to do is defeat the humans and protect the trolls. So that is exactly what we're going to do. But hopefully I have some... Do I not have any movement points with anyone? I have no movement points with anyone, so it seems like we are going to have to wait for the AI to make their moves, and hopefully the trolls will not take too much damage in this turn. I hope not, at the very least. The trolls do seem to be pretty powerful, and I think they have regeneration abilities as well, so that's kind of amazing in itself. So let's try and move over here, do some damage with our spearmen. Uh, I kind of wish the troll wasn't standing there. That kind of makes things a little bit difficult, because now I have to kind of move around them, but I guess it's not too big a deal. I'd like to be able to do some damage to these guys, but I'm out of range. So let's just move along the road. Let's move Dugo along the road as well. And now hopefully some of the humans will attack me instead of attacking the trolls. Should I make these guys into missile troops? You know what? I'm going to make them into missile troops. I think that that sounds like a fun plan, so let's do it. Why not? So these guys are going to be able to help us 
I, I think quite a lot more than shock infantry because even though shock infantry in my opinion is pretty fun to play with they are maybe not as effective at uh, kind of helping out if you know what I mean they kind of have to be in melee range of course I mean melee units have to be in range but ranged units don't have to be and we have enough melee units so I think we should be okay to go with that otherwise I'm gonna move these guys around here and uh, we got some direwolves coming in from the side there as well but that's okay that's not too big a deal and now we can just kill these and it seems like is there another band of trolls did they already kill one band of trolls? Oh, that's kind of unfortunate. I was hopeful that we would be able to save all of them. But it seems like that is not to be. Maybe maybe I'll be able to... Yeah, okay. A little bit more damage. Wow, the, these guys are not taking that much damage at all, are they? That's kind of crazy. Alright, so Dougal can technically go over there. I guess he'll go over there and just maybe take some hits for us. Can I do some damage? Ooh, I can do some damage with our spearmen, but I could also rest them if I so desire. Mm, you know what? Let's just go and attack. And then hopefully... Oh, there, there's the other there's the other band of trolls. That's fantastic. Okay, so they're, they're going to come in and absolutely murder those guys. That's fantastic. The last of the men fall, and you let your bloodied weapons sink, looking guardedly at the large trolls opposite your band. You eltus, human. You have slain your own kin. Why? I did not trust the looks of them. These were clanless bandits. They seemed to have wronged you, and your revenge was just. The humans burnt our cave, killed our sheep, and let them rot. We do not know why they hated us so much. We followed them and fought them. You have our thanks. We will help you in return, pay our debt, and then we leave. Remember that day well, Felison. The trolls will. They never forget their friends, nor their enemies. Alright, so now as a result of that choice, we have been given command of these trolls which is absolutely amazing in my opinion i love the fact that that gave us the ability to command these trolls in actual combat now of course these guys they're going to leave after the scenario is done because they are mercenaries quote unquote or they are just temporary units Otherwise, units gain other experience during combat for defeated enemy units in a 3 hex area. Whenever they receive a level, their combat imp performance improves. Heroes additionally gain a skill point they can spend in their skill tree. Remember that dead individuals lower the unit experience at the end of the battle as fresh recruits replace the dead veterans, often resulting in a level loss. Exactly. So that's that's also something to take into account. And it seems like Felison has advanced in level, so we get to take a look at the skill tree. So you can see here, grants one additional artifact slot. At the moment, I don't even have a secondary one, so I probably won't be taking that. All recruited units start with a third of the hero's level, but at least with level one. Also decreases XP loss of units at the end of a scenario. That sounds really good, actually. I'm probably going to probably gonna take that. Nearby allies recover a small amount of morale, and allies around the unit have a lower chance to receive kills. Hmm. Well. Uh, that's actually kind of good. 15% chance to not lose units. That's pretty good, but I think we're going to go for drill. I think that sounds really good to me. And uh, otherwise, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I really wanted to just show you the, the troll conversation and choice. And now we get to play around with these trolls who have absolutely amazing things. They've got troll blood. They can heal themselves. They do massive amounts of damage and everything. It's really cool. Anyway, this is Fantasy General 2. If you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, check back with me for the next video and uh, we're probably going to be taking a look at some of the later game scenarios with some rather drastic changes and higher tier units it's going to be a lot of fun to check out because there are flying units there's dragons and all kinds of things i'm very excited anyway that will be it i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time